November 1st is the trade deadline, so we wanted to cover five players that could be traded to other teams prior to that deadline. Now, every year, rumors pop up with these big-name players, uh, but realistically, a lot of these players don't get traded just because with cap space and the draft picks, it just doesn't make a lot of sense for teams to trade for these players. So we wanted to focus in on five players that could realistically get traded. Player number one, I mean, it's already out there, Christian McCaffrey. The Panthers are already openly shopping. I don't want to say shopping, but like they're they're hearing, they're listening to what other teams have to offer. Steve Wilkos, I keep on saying Steve Wilkos. It's Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkos is like, get off my stage, Steve guy. But Steve Wilkes as an interim head coach, Matt Rule was fired. Like this is already a, a rebuilding season for them. They just want to look ahead to the future. And if that means getting a lot of draft capital, because by the way, for the Panthers, they only have a first, a second, a fourth, and a fifth. Only four draft picks. This year, a team would only have to pay like a little bit over one million. And then in future years, yes, you have to take on 20 million a year. But they can figure that out for themselves. Uh, but for the Panthers, they would take an $8.7 million cap hit, which sounds like a lot. And it is like a good chunk, but it's not like the end of the world if they trade them. So McCaffrey could get traded in some teams that could be interested. I know that the Bills were uh, openly trying to acquire Christian McCaffrey in the offseason. They were shut down. Uh, the Rams could be in line with Cam Akers being in the trade market. The Arizona Cardinals, the run game just hasn't looked great for them. They need to step up. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs as well. What is the compensation? I mean, nothing less than two high draft picks, I would say. Like, if you want to throw in a player and just one draft pick, sure. But two high draft picks, whether that be a first and a second, two firsts, I don't think you do it for two twos. Maybe they do. But I, I, I'm thinking like a first and a second at least. Uh, the Panthers would accept that for Christian McCaffrey. So, again, throughout the duration of the segment, leave your comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Where do you think Christian McCaffrey would go, and what do you think that compensation would look like? Uh, the second player, let's stick with that team. Let's stick with DJ Moore. Uh, again, the Panthers need more draft capital, only four draft picks, and Moore, who hasn't been looking the best because of the poor quarterback play, could get traded. I know that they just traded Robbie Anderson, to the Arizona Cardinals. So are they really like, eh, let's just shop our best receiver at this point. I don't think the Panthers go all out and trade Christian McCaffrey and DJ Moore. I think if anything, they trade one or the other and get some draft capital out of that. But I don't see them just getting rid of everyone at this point. For DJ Moore, I think the compensation that you could get out of him is maybe like a second rounder or a third rounder. But anything less than that, I don't think that's happening. And anything more than that, I don't think he's worth a first-round pick at this point. For the cap hit, it's only $6 million that the Panthers would have to take a hit on. Besides that, it's a contract that he is getting paid a lot of money. And the team that acquires him has to realistically pay that in future years. But if they're willing to, if they're willing to really invest in a young receiver that has a talent, that just needs a new opportunity and needs more targets... DJ Moore would be the guy. Some teams that could trade for him would be the Baltimore Ravens. I know that's a rumor that popped up. Like, you need some help, right? And so the Baltimore Ravens could be a team that could invest. The Green Bay Packers have been talked about getting a receiver for so long. Uh, they might still be in the Odell Beckham market come mid-November, but it's looking like... Uh, so DJ Moore could be a, a player being talked about by the Green Bay Packers. The Kansas City Chiefs could also use more receivers. Uh, the New York Giants as well. Uh, I, I know that their receiving core has been injured and as well, it just hasn't been working out with Kadarius Tony and the limited amount of snaps that he's getting. Kenny Galladay, the four-year, $72 million contract, just not working. Uh, so the Giants, with them being 5-1, and one, honestly, like they could be going after uh, DJ Moore. And then maybe even the Tennessee Titans. I know the Julio Jones experiment didn't work out, so maybe they're kind of hesitant to, to pay a high draft pick for DJ Moore. But it could be a possibility that more could go to the Tennessee Titans. Player number three that could be traded is Roquan Smith. I think this was kind of obvious uh, in the preseason when he flat out came out on Twitter and put out a statement saying like, hey, I love the Bears organization. I'm thankful for my time in the Windy City, but I am requesting a trade to get out of Chicago because they don't want to sign him to a long-term contract. He's one of the better young outside linebackers, even though technically he hasn't been voted as a second team, first team all pro, went to a Pro Bowl. He's still a very, very good defensive piece for the Chicago Bears. And he's so far proven it 
this season. Like he's playing like Roquan Smith, only 25 years old uh, in the last year of his contract. So if a team really wanted to trade for him, kind of like what the Eagles did for AJ Brown, where they couldn't get contracts working out with the Tennessee Titans. So they said, hey, we will trade for AJ Brown and we will pay him as well. If Roquan Smith goes to a team that wants to do the same thing with him, that's a high possibility. Now the team that he goes to though, you got to keep in mind, they have to have a good amount of cap space. So it, it's kind of hard to tell at this point in 2023 who's going to have a lot of cap space moving forward just because a lot of these teams haven't really re-signed their big-name players. So it's really hard to grasp. But just looking at the perspective of uh, team fits and teams that are competing that need a young linebacker to really step up their game, the Baltimore Ravens have been talked about a lot. Uh, the Miami Dolphins, I will say, I'll throw them out there. The New York Jets could use more pieces on that elite defense that they have. And the Atlanta Falcons, I mean, don't count them out. Everybody expected them to be, what, 1-5 and five at this point? And now they're 3-3. Three and three. Could have been 4-2 and two if that play against Brady, whatever, that Grady Jarrett call. But still, like the Atlanta Falcons could be in the running for Roquan Smith, who played at Georgia, so, uh, you know, born and raised in Georgia. So uh, the cap hit that the Bears would take by trading – Away, Roquan Smith would be $9.7 million. Again, sounds like a lot of money. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not like the Falcons eating up the cap space for Matt Ryan kind of money. Like, it's a little bit less. So uh, he's going to be a free agent at this point. Might as well just get some draft capital for him. Um, I don't think that you get anything more than a second rounder for Roquan Smith. So first rounder out of the table. But a second rounder maybe like... Third rounder, yeah, I could realistically see that happening. So kind of like DJ Moore, second or third rounder for Roquan Smith. Player number four, news that just broke out. Sean McVay actually just came out uh, and said, hey, yeah, we are at actively shopping K-Makers. We are listening to offers. We want him to get a fresh start somewhere else. Just didn't work out. I don't know whether it's like the Achilles or uh, he's just frustrated with his role in the offense. Whatever it is, they are looking for another running back and want to get rid of of Cam Akers. Uh, since he's only on his rookie deal, that's only a $1.6 million hit. So not bad, not bad at all. And what makes Cam Akers a little bit more attractive is that he has two years left on his contract. So he's not going to be a free agent in 2023. 2024 is when he's going to become a free agent. So that kind of gives some teams a little bit more room to kind of see like a trial and error kind of thing. Hey, is Cam Akers going to really work out? I can trade like a low draft pick. I think, honestly, at this point, the Rams, with the way that Akers has played, uh, I, I honestly think they'd be okay with like a fourth rounder at best. And realistically, it might be like a fifth or sixth rounder that you get for Cam Akers. And some teams that could trade for Cam Akers would be the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, I know that they have Cordero Patterson. He's on IR, though, if you want to do like a running back by committee approach. Uh, I mean, like the backup running backs for the Falcons, Cable Huntley, Tyler Algier, sometimes they have their moments, but it just really hasn't been working out for them. So, I mean, you could pair Cordero Patterson with Cam Akers, and that actually might be a, a good one-two punch. Uh, and then I'll also say the Raiders, just because Josh Jacobs is on his last year with his contract, already declined the fifth-year option. The way that they're playing him is like, hey, we don't really, we're not playing you to preserve you for your future because we know that we're not going to re-sign you. So... We need a new running back. And with two years on Cam Akers' contract, it could be, again, in 2023, as a workhorse or a first-string running back, just play, just see what he has, and then let's see if we want to re-sign Cam Akers. The last team I want to mention that could be interested in Cam Akers, maybe this is a little bit of a stretch, but could the Rams and the Panthers do a Christian McCaffrey-Cam Akers kind of deal where the Rams are showing interest in Christian McCaffrey, the Panthers need a running back replacement if they do trade away McCaffrey, get Cam Akers. And I know that you can't just do straight up McCaffrey for Akers, so it would have to be, hey, I will trade Cam Akers and a second round pick for Christian McCaffrey, Cam Akers and a third round, or whatever it may be, like a package deal for McCaffrey. And then the last play we want to talk about is another running back, and that is Josh Jacobs. We talked about him being declined his fifth-year option on the last year of his contract. I only see this happening, though. With the way that Jacobs is playing, I only see this happening if the Raiders continue to lose. They're 1-4 at this point. If they drop to 1-5, do you think to yourself, hey, 
maybe we should trade away Josh Jacobs with the way that he's playing. We don't have any intention of resigning him. His contract is going to be too expensive. With the way that he's playing, let's shop him to a team that is willing to pay him a long-term contract extension. And let's just get our hands rid of it. And let's get a high draft pick out of it. So I think the compensation you could get for Josh Jacobs, if he continues to play the way that he is, you could get a second round pick out of Jacobs. I mean, it's really friendly as far as the cap hit goes because he's, again, just like Cam Akers, he's on his rookie contract, so it's not that big of a hit. But those are five players that could be traded realistically. McCaffrey, Moore, Rokon Smith, Cam Akers, and Josh Jacobs. If you have any other players and any other team destinations you guys want to mention down below, I would love to hear your thoughts on where you think those players would go.